everybody and welcome to another edition of Capital Talk sponsored by the Dicor Corporation. With me is Greg Four of RV Business. I'm Rick Kessler and joining us today is Jeremy Green, Senior Director of Events and Marketing with the RV Industry Association, John Tingatella, President of RV Designer, and John Hawkins, Sales Manager at Norco Industries. Welcome everyone. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Glad to be here. And uh, for the purposes of this video, since we have two Johns, uh, John Hawkins will be John and John Tingatella will be JT. How's that? <laughs> that works. <laughs> so the one thing that we really wanted to talk to everyone about is uh, coming up in August is the after a year hiatus because of the pandemic, of course, but uh, we'll have an in-person RV aftermarket conference. Um, and I understand it's it's a milestone for this one. Is, is that right? Absolutely is. 50th anniversary, right? Where's it at, Jeremy? And, and what are the dates? And what are some of the uh, scheduled details? So, yeah. So we're going to be down in Atlanta, um, August 9th through 12th. Um, like I said, it's the 50th anniversary. Uh, really excited about getting the aftermarket segment back together. Uh, those personal relationships, um, that networking is really critical to the segment. And so, you know, as you mentioned, after that year hiatus, it's really great to be able to get back together. Um, the event runs, like I said, the 9th through 12th. It's a Monday through Thursday. Uh, that kickoff day, we usually have um, a golf tournament that we're going to have there. And then there's uh, some networking Monday evening. And then we really get into the core of the event, which is one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings between suppliers and distributors in the aftermarket uh, to have conversations about, you know, uh, existing product lines, upcoming product lines, what's working, what's not, um, and how to make adjustments for, you know, the rest of the year into 2022. Um, and so those one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings happen over three days, the Tuesday through Thursday. Um, they're 30 minutes long each meeting. And uh, you got distributors in the industry that are kind of bouncing around the hotel to, um, to the different suppliers and, and having those meetings. Um, additionally, at the event, uh, we got a really cool new session about, um, it's an educational workshop uh, focused on the consumer. And uh, I'm sure we'll kind of touch more on that here later. Uh, JT, the, the, that one-on-one -on -one appointments is, is really quite unique. Can you tell us, was that how you guys did it back in the first one? Well, I wasn't ago. at the first one. As I told you uh, early on, uh, I might be the oldest guy in the group, but uh, I was in high school when the first one came out. Um, but seriously, I think the, the structure has been similar for a very long time. It's a combination, as Jeremy mentioned, of small group focused private conversations um, uh, where suppliers and distributors get to talk about the next year's program, product development all kinds of things that are relevant to their relationship. It's also maybe the unofficial or de facto kickoff of the, of the season. If you're using September 1st as a model year kickoff, obviously the dates are, you know, interact well. Um, and, and we all go there as suppliers and distributors looking for the kickoff to next year. We're thinking ahead. Theoretically, the season has just kind of wound down in August, although in today's day and age, sometimes seasons extend and we, we think that's wonderful. Uh, but historically, that was the idea. You'd go through the fall in terms of catalog preparations and getting ready for next year, getting ready for a uh, distributor show and other events, and then walk into the, the following new year ready to, ready to rock for the new season, which would be coming up. So that was generally the idea. Um, and, and it's essentially still the game plan. Um, but the, the, the private meetings are core, the larger group networking uh, and events is, is, is wonderful. And as I think I mentioned earlier, and I'll you know, touch on a little bit here too, um, one of the great things about our segment, uh, the aftermarket group has just really deep, rich history and legacy. Jeremy referenced 50 years. Um, and uh, uh, one of the real neat things about it is it's really built on people relationships and, and they go deep. And it's, it's not only meaningful and at times extremely hard earned business, but it's also 
a pleasant industry where generally people get along pretty well and really enjoy seeing each other at this event. Um, we could probably talk about that for a long, long time. John, I believe John Hawkins, who's on the line here too, I think he's been in that group longer than I have and certainly can speak to some of the history and legacy. But I think that's one of the neat things that makes our group special and unique is, is just the richness of the relationships. Well, John, I know you weren't there for all of those 50 years, but uh, enough of them to really tell us some of the best parts of the conference that you like. Yeah, and uh, that's very polite of you because I, it, I've been, I think, to 16 is what I'm at now. So not quite like the Tom Mannings and the, the Harry Allens of the world. But, you know, it's really a unique event. Um, what I like the most about it is obviously the opportunity to see uh, a, a wide offering of our distributor partners in one place. And, and that's tough to do. It's even become tougher to visit our distributors, obviously, with the COVID situation. Uh, you know, take take Atlas in Canada, um, you know, to bear, you know, we, we can't just hop on a plane and go up there. You've got a quarantine at one of four airports. Uh, it, it's it's tough. So this is an opportunity. Hopefully Canada opens up to, to, to see these guys. We haven't seen them in some time. But then the relationships and it's the relationships such as JT and I have and Jeremy and all of us. We get to see people and create relationships, whether we're doing business with them or we just parallel them in what they do in non -com non competitive uh, interests, and all and that's very valuable. I've I've sat and listened to conversations between fellow distributors, uh, to where they're bouncing ideas off each other, and and that's that's very enjoyable. It's very unique uh, because for that week, uh, even though they're competitors, they tend to set it aside, and uh, and and those friendships. And, and we are an aging industry in a, in a, in a sense, and, and we've been around each other a while. And, and those are key, and it's important, and friendships grow from that. This, and this next question really goes back uh, quite a few years now, uh, at least a handful, when uh, the RV Aftermarket Association merged with the RV Industry Association. But you really took a good focus on understanding that RV consumer which continues, uh, I believe, at this conference as well. You'll have some more data to, to report. Is that right, Jeremy? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, uh, you know, I'll let uh, JT and John maybe speak to, to the relationship and, you know, coming under the RVIA banner um, and, you know, the opportunities that that provides. But, you know, when we're looking at the consumer, there's a wealth of data that, you know, the RV Industry Association is gathering. And we recently came out with the Go RVing, RV uh, owner uh, demographic study, you know, showing 11.2 million uh, RV owners out there, households who own an RV, 22% um, of those between the ages of 18 and 34, you know, so we got nearly a quarter of our, you know, RV owning households, uh, 34 and under, um, which, you know, is really critical for the future growth of the industry. Um, so we'll be dipping into that, uh, you know, during an education breakout session. Um, but, uh, but I'll let the other guys maybe speak to, you know, the relationships that have been built, you know, coming under RVIA. JT. Yeah, let me, let me jump in on that. Thank you. Um, yes, absolutely. When we came together, when RVAA came together with RVIA, um, one of the things we, we felt would be a real opportunity was, was the ability to do surveys, the ability to research and create a, a set of initiatives based on an underpinning of, of data and fact and, and, and good numbers and statistics. And not that that matters all totally, but it really does help steer you in the right direction. So the first year after uh, the merger, we um, uh, engaged the first actual consumer survey uh, with 800 RVers, 400 over the age of 45, 400 under the age of 45. Obviously we're looking for a demographic understanding. Um, and really, we were looking. We were looking for satisfaction. We were looking for um, a future intent vis-a-vis -vis use of our products in the aftermarket parts and accessories. There's been a fair amount of research and study, and rightfully so, on uh, satisfaction with your RV and buy, the buying of the RV experience and service and things like that. But there hadn't been anything specifically in the area of accessories, parts and accessories, our world. And uh, it really opened our eyes to some opportunities. We followed up the following year, which was, I believe, 2019. And uh, we went a little deeper and we decided to, to take a look at not only satisfaction levels overall, but uh, 
satisfaction levels with certain aspects of the RVing experience that relate to us. We chose seven different applications, things like climate control and leveling and electrical and sanitation, things like that that people have to do with our products when they RV. And we got some really good perspective on that. And it really kind of whetted our interest to using that as an underpinning of where we go in the future. Um, and since we've come together, we did re rewrite our charter and, and attempt to shift our, our focus in the direction of the consumer. Uh, long story short, at the end of the day, and this is something RVI is real good at reminding everybody, all of us are interacting with each other. And we're probably, a lot of us are what we would call trade partners. I interact with the distributor, the sell home product, they interact with the dealer. And yeah, I guess there's a customer supplier relationship there, but the only true customer in our market is the person who bought the RV and then goes in the stores and buys the products that we sell that he uses on the RV. That's the true customer, it's, it's the consumer. So we're really utilizing that as our main focal point and then working things back through the supply chain and how it relates to us and where we should go. Um, so we're excited about that and we can touch on what we're gonna do here at the conference in a minute. But I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, uh, hand off to my my buddy John Hawkins in a second. He he's really been instrumental in helping us envision the opportunity of how do we connect with those people to make sure when they buy and use our products they have a good experience, and we help bridge some of those gaps because they may never have owned an RV before and they may not be familiar with some of the nuance. So I, I thought maybe it would be instrumental if John could. Sh uh, shed some some light and some color on that because he's he's very knowledgeable on that subject. John, go ahead. Well, uh, to kind of tie in with what Jeremy and JT are, are discussing, I mean, I think we all know that um, it's a chicken and the egg kind of scenario. Without consumers, we don't build RVs. Without without RVs, we don't sell aftermarket. Uh, in the end, uh, the consumers are what drive us. Um, and we have we have received this uh, unexpected windfall of um, favoritism uh, based on the COVID. I mean, I, I tell people all the time, put yourself back 13 months ago. And did you at that moment ever think that the RV industry would be excelling the way that it is? Now, we obviously have a lot of obstacles and we're, you know, I was just just got off a plane last night from Elkhart and uh, it's it's organized chaos up there right now everywhere you go. And we're doing the best, you know, we're doing the best to keep our head above water, but what we're seeing from it and some of where this comes from is that we have so many brand new RVs in the market that have, have never even stepped in one before uh, up to as far away as, as, as a year ago. So I think, you know, with uh, RVIA's uh, survey that they put out, which is, which is awesome. I love surveys like 109, 199 pages of, of uh, graphs and, and, uh, and stats. I love it. Um, but then KOA also put out uh, 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 some numbers uh, a couple of weeks ago that were very staggering. You know, over a million potential new RVers have come into the market. That's, that's insane. And with those new RVers become confusion and uh, inexperience. And what we as, uh, as a committee uh, to RVIA, the aftermarket committee, are looking to do is to help those uh, those new consumers. We want to retain uh, those customers. You know, I, I used to work for a company that we discussed the lifetime value of a customer to a dealer. How many times is that consumer going to buy an RV from, from a dealer? How many slide out toppers? How many just red sewer hoses? You know, how many X jobs? And you put a number to that and it really, it really opens your eyes to what the potential to all these new RVers are. Now we want them happy. We don't want them when it becomes safe or acceptable, whatever the word is, to go back on a cruise ship or to get on a plane to go to Fiji or to, to go wherever. We want them to stay with us in our industry. And so we've got this opportunity and trying to help educate those consumers uh, helps them, helps the dealers, it takes a little bit of load off the dealers as well as suppliers such as us. And that's the key to it. And that's what we're going to continue to drive to and continue to be innovative with is look for opportunities to educate the consumers and benefit our supplier partners and distributor partners. All We're all in this together. It's a trickle down. And that's what the goal is. And uh, we, we have some things in the works. It's not all complete quite yet. 
but we've got a great bunch of guys with a lot of knowledge and, and uh, a lot of good ideas. And that's what we're, that's what we're capitalizing on right now. I think Greg, let me, let me insert a, a, a question if I may. Um, the, certainly the conference is, is a, a key part of the aftermarket association or the aftermarket segment of RVIA. Uh, in, in I think that the camaraderie part and the working together and putting the competitiveness aside is what RVIA is made of anyway in RVAA prior and WDA prior uh, all have the same basic principles in that regard. But my question to get off of the show uh, a little bit or the conference a little bit is, uh, and I'm going to ask the two of you, maybe even Jeremy, although he, he doesn't have a stick in this fire, uh, to speak a little bit for your distributor customers. The, the, with the current supply chain issues, which are very real and seem to be rolling in terms of the products that they affect, and with the current uh, rapid increase in material costs, how, how are the suppliers and distributors dealing with the different channels of distribution, uh, the product availability, and all, all of those issues? And, and is it, are issues resolved or are they still outstanding and still causing uh, issues? Uh, I'll start. I'll start. Um, uh, Greg, I own a business uh, and we are. We're, we're the classic supplier example. We're a combination of importation from overseas as well as domestic sourcing, maybe 50-50, give or take. Um, and we're feeling, we're feeling a tremendous squeeze and have for several months. Uh, we knew coming into this season on the heels of COVID, it was going to be a challenge. It was, there was going to be significant new rebounds. The market was in a good place to start with, but there was going to be some even new rebounds. We, we all prepared as best as we could. I think we all realize this is an unusual opportunity. So let's bulk up as best as we can. And the answer is not one answer. It's, it varies depending on the supplier, depending on where they're getting their products from, depending on what commodities they may be involved in and how available or unavailable they are. I can tell you in our case, um, we came in healthy. We're still reasonably healthy, but we're very, very concerned because the expectation, there was no expectation that normal lead times were going to double and triple. We had no expectation of that based on logistical choke points. We, that was not on our radar. Um, so we're doing everything we can up to and including uh, leapfrogging over the problem and flying stuff. Um, we're in a seasonal industry. There's no surprise there. This is a seasonal business. It's, it's traditional bell curve, you know, you, you, in the aftermarket. You, you, you live pretty good between May and, and August because that's when people are using their RVs. It's when people are buying uh, accessories for a whole host of purposes. Doesn't mean the rest of the year it dies, but it definitely is the height of the season. And you gear up for that. So the answer is a lot of answers. Um, we simply have to get through this uh, and, and keep, keep the dealers is, is chock full of product as possible. Dealers understand it. They're not just feeling it from us. They're also feeling it uh, in all aspects. Uh, and it is a universal problem. Um, I don't think I give you a specific answer because there isn't a specific answer. I'll shift off to, to, to John Hawkins, who is dealing with a similar, similar challenge, slightly different probably, but a similar challenge. Well, and, you know, to, to discuss the, the, the distributor side of it, um, you know, the distributors are key to what we do. Um, you know, if you take a look at how many RV dealerships that are in North America, you know, there's no way whatsoever that a, a supplier such as myself could have a relationship shipping and, and uh, financial with every dealer in North America. It's impossible. Every, every industry uses uh, warehouse distribution. Um, and they are key to us. We just had one of the distributors in for a meeting Tuesday in Elkhart. It was a great meeting. What has changed is that I think we are trying to all uh, 
uh, work together to forecast and to uh, share numbers and share what's going on um, to try to get through this. Uh, we're in a we're in a really tough uh, situation right now because we're primarily an OEM supplier. So the aftermarket is literally the redheaded stepchild. I'm the redheaded stepchild. So is the aftermarket for BAL. So we have been struggling and, and we have a light at the end of the tunnel, just like JT said, uh, looking for ways to, to think outside the box to where we can get the product back to where it needs to be to help the dealers. Um, and, and again, the consumers, like we've discussed, and uh, we're, we're starting to turn the corner on that. Um, the problems is that the, the, we have the number one problem, hands down, if you're, you're based in the Michiana here, is labor. That's, that's it. It's the root of all evil in our industry right now. And so we're trying to do the best we can. We're trying to streamline our processes to get more out of the labor that we have. We're trying to retain that labor. We're hosting a hiring event in Elkhart as we speak. Um, and then you go to components. You know, steel is a huge concern. I mean, you, you hear the horror stories, the foam, the circuit boards, the windows, everything. We, it, it is, it's, it's, it's like the movie, The Perfect Storm. It's all hitting at once. So look and see, though, what we've been able to do as an industry to get past this and to be able to support our existing consumers and dealers as well as the new ones. It is really miraculous when you step back and look at it. Sometimes it's hard to do that because you're under the gun every day. Every day when I wake up, it's like, oh, my gosh, what's on email today waiting for me? And I'm sitting here on vacation this Thursday and Friday, and I've already spent three hours working on a working on a scheduling issue with a with a with an OEM right now. So and I'm but I'm happy to be with you guys. So uh, well, thank you. It, it, it's it's you know we're we've just we've just been kicked into the deep end and we're trying to tread water. Um, but the distributors are are being very patient, very accommodating because we're affecting their bottom line. We're affecting uh, the dealer's bottom line. And, you know, if they don't have uh, units or, or X shocks or, or cabinet hardware for JT to sell, you know, that, that could negatively affect them as the year goes on. So those partnerships, as we loop back to what we talked about, that we created over the years through the RVAA conferences, and now as we're, a, as we're a, an arm of RVIA, that's, this is where it comes in. This is where it pays off right now. Mm -hmm. I've often Thank you, said... Jeff. I've often said that uh, given what everything you guys have just said, the industry has been able to not only do very well right now, but set some pretty, pretty big records with one hand tied behind our back. Yeah, Rick, if, um, you know, if I could just jump in too, I mean, and, and, you know, both John and JT mentioned it, the fact that, you know, we've had March record number of shipments, Q1 of 2021 record number of shipments against all of these challenges and, you know, um, I think it speaks a lot to that camaraderie between the industry to solve problems. Um, and it, it happened from the outset of, of COVID and it continues to happen. And, you know, we'll certainly be taking place at the, at the conference coming up here in August. I can, let's, uh, we'll wrap this up by just saying that uh, that supply chain opportunities, right? There are no problems. <laughs> Those supply chain topic, that'll certainly be among the, among the topic of conversation in, in Atlanta. Yeah, I, I, can, I can picture that one already. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Our pleasure. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank, thank you. you. See you soon.